with spring in full swing and summer right around the corner, this is the time of year I lean more into skin tints rather than actual foundations. I have already started collecting a variety of skin tints, everything from drugstore to high end, for my annual skin tint roundup video, which will be coming in the next month or so. Now, I originally did not intend to include Lisa Eldridge's new skin tint, mostly because I was so disappointed in her foundation. It just looked dry and makeup-y. No matter what I did, I could not make it work on my 64-year-old very dry skin. So I actually wound up decluttering that very expensive foundation. However, a couple of weeks ago, I asked my viewers what tints you would like to see me review, and I got so many requests for Lisa Eldridge, so I took one for the team and I ordered it. So today, we are going to take a very close look at Lisa Eldridge's brand new Seamless Skin Enhancing Tint. Now I have been playing with this for well over a week, so this is not a first impression. And tomorrow is the last day of the Sephora sale, so I'm going to share my tiny little Sephora haul. We are going to play with Rare Beauty's brand new Luminous Powder Blush, as well as Merit Beauty's new matte lipstick and hourglass phantom glossy balm if this sounds fun to you throw this video a thumbs up and let's get into it starting of course with the skin tint now this runs 49 dollars for one ounce or 30 mls definitely on the pricey side but you really only need a few drops so this will last a long time this comes in 18 shades i have it in the shade t6 more on shades in a moment now the packaging has gotten mixed reviews, definitely a very unique shape, but I rather like the compact, elegant shape that fits comfortably into the palm of my hand and the lightweight, recyclable plastic squeezy tube makes this really travel friendly. So I actually really enjoy the packaging. As far as the claims, this is designed for all skin types and it claims to have a fresh, luminous, light coverage, skin enhancing tint in a feel good formula for a replenished, healthy, plumped looking skin. The blurring pigments seamlessly evens tone, lifts shadows, and tones down redness. Lisa says the crease proof formula works like a dream under the eyes. As far as the ingredients, this is made with 78% skincare ingredients, including glycerin, prickly pear oil, sunflower seed oil, squalene, and vitamin E. This is vegan, cruelty-free, fragrance-free, talc-free, and contains no SPF, alcohol, essential oils, or gluten, so I think this would be excellent for sensitive skin. As far as finding a shade, I did find it a little confusing that her website did not give any description in terms of depth of tone. For instance, they didn't say whether a shade was in the fair range or the light or the medium or the deep range. It did give a description of undertones and it did have a lot of pictures. Now Lisa's launch video, she did go more in depth into the shades. I did find that very helpful and I will link her video in the description box below. What I did wind up doing is I used her shade finder on her website and when I put my shade of her foundation in, which was shade nine by the way, it gave me three possible shades. T4 neutral with golden undertones, T5 cool with olive undertones, or T6 neutral undertones. I did have a little difficulty deciding between T5 cool with olive undertones and T6 neutral undertones because I do have olive undertones, but I have neutral undertones. So based on Lisa's video, I did wind up ordering T6. And here is the consistency. You can see it's pretty thin, but not overly runny. It has a beautiful silky consistency. And I do think that the depth of tone is more in the light to light medium range. Very, very neutral. Now this is just a tad deep for me right now, but I think it will be perfect in the summer, although I'm still curious about T5. So let's get this on my face. Now I have all my skincare on, including my Dermatology Broad Spectrum SPF 45. 
That is an untinted hybrid SPF that isn't overly glowy. But I did try this with a variety of sunscreens this week and it seemed to work well over all of them. I did not test this with any kind of a primer. I don't even own a primer. Anyway, you do have to give it a really, really good shake because it is a very liquidy. Now, Lisa says to start with two drops for your entire face. I have found I need a little bit more than that, so I am going to use two drops on one side of my face because I do want to show you side to side coverage. So I am just going to this feels incredibly silky and lightweight going on. It just glides over the skin and it seems to practically blend itself. Here I am applying it over the eye area because Lisa says it's creaseless and I do think it neutralizes my under eyes a little bit. Okay, two drops on this side of my face compared to no skin tint. Now, I do think it has a very light coverage, but it has evened out my skin tone a little and taken down my redness a little bit. Let's get it on the other side of my face. All right, so here is one layer, two drops on each side. Still really nice light coverage. It has a really pretty natural satin skin-like finish with just a touch of luminosity. It really just looks like skin, but I still have a little bit of redness peeking through and I do want to see if I can build up coverage and get a little bit more coverage on my brown spots. So I am going to add a drop. Just a drop, oops, I think that's two drops. And let's see if we can build up a little coverage on the areas that I have some brown spots and a little bit of redness on my cheeks and around my nose. Gosh, that just builds beautifully. I do think I got a little more coverage. So let's build a little bit on this side. All right, this does build very nicely upon itself. It did tone down my redness a little bit. And although my dark spots are still peeking through, I do think they are a little bit softer and more diffused. So I do think this is still light coverage. Now, this does dry down really quickly. There is no tackiness whatsoever. It just feels like really beautifully moisturized skin. Taking a close look with a magnifying mirror, there is absolutely no gathering in my forehead lines. It is not doing anything weird around my nose. It is not accentuating texture or dry patches. This is literally undetectable on the skin. It does not look or feel like makeup. It just looks like my skin, only much, much better. Now, as far as the eye area, Lisa did say it could be used around the eye area sort of as a concealer. I don't feel like it gave me quite enough coverage, so I am going to brighten my under eyes with my Dermatology Illuminating Corrector SPF 41. This has got to be one of my favorite products of 2024 so far. It is just so natural looking on the eye area. It's really more of a cream with a little bit of correction in it. And just pop that on. It's really a perfect combination with a lightweight skin tint because it is so darn natural looking. That's better. 
Now, I am going to go off camera and do my eye makeup, and then I will come back and we will play with the Rare Beauty Blush and the Merit Beauty Matte Lipstick. Eye makeup is done. Now, I did go for a very soft, natural eye look today. Just some brows, a little liner, mascara, and a light wash of cream eyeshadow. I will put all the products in the description box below, as usual. Moving on to blush. I was really excited to share the Rare Beauty Luminous Powder Blush. I picked it up in the shade Hope. When I first got it, I was really intimidated because it looked so metallic in the pan. Unfortunately, I just dropped it. So I'm not gonna be able to show you how incredibly metallic it looks. Oh my gosh, that's a bummer. But we are still going to put it on because I have found that if you use a very light, fluffy brush and a very light hand, I'm just gonna have to let that chunk go, and a very light hand, you can get a really soft, pretty look. So I'm just picking up, oh my gosh, I'm so bummed out that I dropped it and it broke. Anyway, light, fluffy brush, very light hand, it gives a really soft, luminous glow with no sparkle or shimmer. Now, if I didn't already say this is in the shade Hope, it's just a really pretty mauve tone, which is what I usually go for. Let's get it on the other side. I'm so bummed out that I dropped that. Anyway, let's get a little blush on this side. Gosh, that really, really, really is pretty. Okay, so there is the blush. Now, I do feel like I perhaps over applied the blush just a tad, but sometimes when I feel like I've applied too much blush, it looks really good on camera. So we will let it go at that. And I hope you can see that it has a really pretty radiant sheen. But even when I look close up in a magnifying mirror, I don't detect any sparkle or glitter. Anyway, I think this is a really pretty blush and I would definitely like to pick up a couple more shades. Moving on to lipstick, I picked up two of the new Merit Beauty Matte Lipsticks and one of the Hourglass Phantom Glossy Balm. I am going to swatch these for you. The Merit Beauty Matte Lipstick, I picked it up in the shade Maison, which is described as a mauve. And there is the swatch. And I also picked it up in the shade Sunday, which is a very soft pink. My gosh, it's gonna be hard to decide which one to wear today. And I also picked up the Hourglass Phantom Glossy Balm in the shade Haze. It's really just a very clear balm. Oh my gosh, they're all so pretty. You know, I think I'm going to show you the glossy balm first and then we'll decide on which lipstick. That is pretty. It's just a barely there shade, but it really does something to the lips. It's really lightweight and silky. I absolutely love it. I definitely want to get a couple more of these shades. That is the Hourglass Phantom Glossy Balm in the shade Haze. As far as which lipstick shade, now I have worn both of these and I really, really do enjoy both of these. But I think with today's look, I'm going to go with the Sunday because I am wearing a pink cheek and I think this will go really nicely with the cheek. So there is sort of full opacity. You know, these feel incredibly lightweight and moisturizing, especially for a matte formula. But I think what I want to do is blot it down a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
and I am going to go over it with the hourglass simply because I do like a little bit more shine on my lips. Perfect. So here is the final look. Final thoughts on the skin tint. I don't think I've talked about wear time yet in this video. I have been wearing it for well over a week and I have found it to wear surprisingly well throughout the day, especially for a tint. Now it does fade very gradually by the end of the day, but it fades so gracefully it never looks tired or patchy or weird. I really like this tint. It's fast, easy, natural, and so, so pretty on the skin. Having said that, I do want to compare it to one of my other favorite skin tints that I've been talking about for a long time, the Hourglass Veil Hydrating Tint. Now I'm not gonna do a side by side, but what I will tell you is that the Hourglass Veil is a little more cushiony, a little bit more emollient, and a little bit more glowy. So while the Hourglass works beautifully on my extra dry winter skin, I think the lighter weight, more satin skin-like finish will work perfectly in the summer. So whether this will become my summer go-to or not depends on some of the other skin tints that I will be trying in my upcoming skin tint roundup video. But so far, I really, really do love this and I do recommend it. As far as my Sephora mini haul, let me see. You know, I really love the Hourglass what is it called? Hourglass Phantom Glossy Balm. I think it is gorgeous. That is going to live in my purse. The Merit Matte lipsticks are beautiful. And I did pick up a couple other things. I picked up, what is this called? In Beauty Mineral Sun Glow SPF 43. I haven't even tried this yet. I really wanted to get the new Super Goop Protectant but they were completely out of stock. So, like I said earlier, I am still in the process of collecting skin tints and SPFs for upcoming Roundup videos. So if there are any SPFs or tints you would like me to try, please let me know in the comment box. And with that, have yourself a great day and I hope to see you in my next video. Thank you.